Alright y'all, welcome back to another one. So today's video is, is a topic in which I get a lot of questions about. Um, so I wanted to take just a, a few minutes here and, and discuss, um, you know, basically skinning time frames. Before we get going on today's video, a couple quick things to take care of. Hey, if you guys are uh, interested, now have merch available here. We've got some apparel. I uh, got these nice uh, Kukri Outdoors hoodies. I got logos on the front and the back. We also have t-shirts the same. They will be linked down below. It'll be the first link that you come to in the description. Uh, you can go to Hoosier Trapper Supply and get your stuff while you're there. Check out a bunch of the other stuff that they've got available. Uh, great way to support the channel and I've been wearing this one now for quite a while. Pretty, pretty nice. So anyway, another quick thing is now that we are into the trapping season. Hey y'all, remember this trapping community, especially uh, you know on YouTube, is really growing. Uh, a lot of new guys coming in. So not just for me, but for everybody, uh, show them some support, some love. You know, simple things like leaving a comment, hitting that like button, uh, subscribing to their channels. You know, it really helps out. Not just not just me, but everybody in general. Uh, you know, it shows that algorithm on YouTube that this is a thing, and they need to keep pushing it. So. Uh, you know, for those of you out there who want to keep seeing this content coming, do me a favor. You know, leave a comment, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. Uh, it, it not only helps just me, but it helps everybody. So, you know, all the new channels that are coming out, be sure you help them out as well. All right, so let's get into today's video here. So this is a topic that I get uh, a lot of questions on, and it has to do with skinning time frame. Now, in general, for those of you who watched my fur handling videos, generally speaking, I try to emphasize skinning day of or as quick as possible. Now, the reason that I do that is, is pretty simple. Uh, frankly, there are literally hundreds of thousands of people that are watching, watching my videos from, quite frankly, all over the world. But primarily in, in North America, um, whenever, why I kind of stress skinning the same day is kind of just to generalize everything. Um, obviously, the guy from southern Georgia is not going to have the same weather conditions as uh, you know somebody from, from northern Minnesota, right? And generally, for the most part, the weather and temperature is what dictates um, kind of the allowable time frame in order to skin. Obviously, you know, temperature, high temperatures are going to increase uh, you know, decay and you're not going to have as much time as if you're in, you know, freezing or sub-freezing weather, you know, to give you a little bit better. Uh, also, just something that I've done for years is I don't have a big bank of freezers or coolers or, or anything like that. So generally, my kind of cycle is to skin that day's catch and then flesh the previous day's catch. It's already cooled down and, and washed and dried and, and what have you. Uh, so, you know, for me, it's just a great cycle to get into. Now, I completely understand, you know, everybody's got their, uh, their own, you know, deal. You may have your, your kids Christmas play or somebody's sick in the family and you just may not be able to, to skin that catch that day. Also, I, I know, you know, right here, we've got, we've got a coon and a coyote, uh, in front of, you know, this would take me, you know, 10 minutes to, to finish out. But I know for, for a lot of the guys that are, that are new getting into it, you know, this may be several hours of commitment, you know, that they have to give to, to get this stuff skinned out. So, uh, I wanted to touch on, on skinning time frames. So what I've got for you here is, is basically kind of two ends of the spectrum here. Um, we've got we've got a coon here and we've got a coyote here. And and what I mean by two ends of the spectrum is this. So generally speaking, the critters um, that have the the most fat content are the critters that you will be able to leave longer um, from skinning. If that makes sense. That that fat layer. Uh, is basically kind of what protects that hide from slipping. And whenever I talk slipping, that is essentially whenever that hide has gone gone bad, decomposition has hit that hide and the hair starts falling out. That's what we don't want, right? That's why I always emphasize skinning quickly. Now, we'll take this, this coon, for instance, and, and coons, skunks, beaver, um, you know, critters that have high fat content, 
they are the ones that you can let sit a little longer because that decomposition is actually coming from, from inside. It's not coming from outside. It's actually the, the internal guts and juices that are starting to break down. That's what actually is causing that animal to, to break down and kind of, if you want to call it, rot from the inside. So a, a critter like this that holds a lot of fat, like this coon or a skunk or a beaver, you know, you can let them sit longer because that that those juices, those internal digestive juices, if you want to say, uh, it takes longer for them to get to the hide. Uh, go over here to this coyote here. Coyotes here are completely different. Uh, generally speaking, um, I, I've learned a little bit more about coyotes in the West. They hold a lot more fat than Western coyotes. But, but for the most part, your canines, your, your real predators, uh, so fox, uh, coyotes, uh, muskrats, they don't hold a lot of fat usually. Uh, you know, so these, these critters here that don't hold a lot of fat, they are the ones that's going to slip quickest. And that's simply because the, the, the fat content, their skin is right up against their hide. So, you know, we kind of got both ends of the spectrum here with, with this coon and this coyote. So what I want to do is I want to share with you a few ways to kind of prolong that, that time frame to skinning. All right, so you see here, um, I've got these, uh, these two critters and I've got them hanging up by their rear feet. And, and they're facing down. Both these critters are a day old. Um, so they, they were both harvested yesterday. Uh, like I said, with these coyotes uh, especially, like I said, where you'll see the first slippage is usually on the underside of the belly. That's right where the gut is. And uh, that's kind of where those those coyotes obviously have some, some really, really intense digestive juices to be able to break down all the nasty crap that they're eating all the time. So generally right here on the stomach is where it's going to slip first. So one easy way to kind of save yourself some time, say you've caught your coyote and you're not going to be able to skin him till the next morning or the next day. One easy way to do it is hang him up like this from his feet. What that does is that actually kind of settles all that that gut down inside the chest cavity so you know if you've ever whenever you skin you notice there's just a very thin layer of meat between the hide and um, you know the internal organs right here if you hang that critter upside down you're kind of forcing all that stuff to go back down into that chest cavity and it takes a little bit longer to creep um, you know so it kind of saves yourself a little bit of time obviously uh, you know, it kind of goes without saying, if you can get this thing in colder temperatures, uh, that also helps the decomposition rate. So by colder temperatures, I like to say, you know, that mid 40s, um, you know, big thing is keep them out of the sun, right? So here in my first shed, my floor is a wood floor, not insulated. So whenever we start getting those temperatures, you know, down into the low 40s, freezing, or even under freezing, I can throw a critter on this floor keep them out of the sun, and, and it's essentially kind of like throwing them in a cooler. Although my, my temperature up here with my, my wood stove going or my heater is much warmer kind of over there where my drying rack is, uh, right down on the floor level is still uh, very, very, very cool, right? So uh, if you have a concrete floor, you know, that'll hold a lot of colder weather or something similar to what I've got here. Very easy to, uh, to kind of drop the temperature down and that's a lot of it is really the temperature but hanging hanging critters like this um, definitely will save you some time another thing is like I said if you kind of picture how you how you got your internal organ uh, I do this with beaver a lot too so and you can do it with coon but I've got my table right here so another good way is just simply lay your critter on the back so on the back you know, you've got a lot more meat here on your backside, uh, and it, it's harder for that, you know, that decomposition to penetrate there. So if you can get all those, all those internal organs to settle down, you can kind of buy yourself a little bit of time as well, um, you know, by, by just laying your critters on the back. So whenever I bring beavers in, uh, if I know that I'm not going to be able to skin them, you know, till the next day, I'll throw them flat on their back. And uh, you know that'll that'll give you a little bit more time too. Like I said, I think I think the best method is probably hang them uh, with your canines, hang them from their feet. That will uh, 
you know, that'll kind of settle the organs down in the chest cavity. Uh, you know, something like this squirrel, obviously this is a squirrel I harvested today on the way chicken. You know, I'm going to eat this squirrel. This is going to be my dinner. So I don't want to let him set a couple of days, right? Uh, but, but with the fur, generally you can, uh, you can let it go. I, I mean, and I don't want to throw some crazy numbers out there, but you know, letting, letting a catch sit for, you know, 30 to 48 hours is definitely not uncommon. Um, you know, I, I would not suggest letting a canine go more than a day, day and a half, simply because, you know, they are the ones that's, that's going to go, and you'll see it whenever you skin it, it'll actually be a green belly. Uh, there'll be a green tint to it. Now, it's not the end of the world if you skin it and you've got a green belly. Uh, you know, you can spray a little bleach on it, or a lot of times, once you just dry it, if it's not gone too far, um, you know, though, that, that decomposition will come right out of it, but you know, something like coons or skunks or stuff, I mean, and I, like I said, I don't want to just throw out some stupid number, but you can let them go several days, uh, especially if you're in colder weather, and not really worry about it. Like I said, the critters that have that large fat layer on them um, are generally, you know, a little bit more resilient to, to that decomposition, uh, especially, you know, um, with temperatures. I mean, right now, like I said, right here uh, in the first shade, it's about like, I don't know, 55 degrees, 50, 55. Down on the floor, I mean, I can just drop my hand and feel it's colder. Uh, you know, it's getting down, you know, just below freezing at night right now. We're going to have a big cold front come through, so next couple of days. So, you know, it, it kind of changes as the weather goes. Um, one other thing to consider, and this is something I want to touch on too, if you're skinning by hand, sometimes it is actually to your benefit to let that critter set for a little bit more time. Um, you'll see here, like these critters right here, this coon, for instance, uh, this was this was harvested uh, yesterday afternoon. It's now mid morning the following day, so you know it's been oh 16, 18 hours or so. You'll see right now this coon is still pretty stiff. That being said, he's starting to kind of come out of rigor. Um, now, you know, I, if you don't have a, a great setup with a skinning machine, sometimes this can actually be to your benefit. So, so a critter um, right after dispatch will be pretty pretty loose, right? Uh, the, and then they'll go into a form of rigor where their whole body will stiffen up. Uh, that rigor will generally last, you know, 12, 16, 18 hours. As, as that time passes, and I mean, what it is, is that animal starting to, you know, break down, uh, that rigor will come out of a critter and they will actually loosen up a little bit. Now, if you're a guy that, that's kind of inexperienced in it, or, or maybe, you know, you don't quite have the best setup, sometimes this can actually be advantageous to you because you're not dealing with a critter that is like super, super stiff. Um, so it definitely is an option. And like I said, a lot of this is based on, on location and temperature. And, you know, there's a lot of different factors. So that's why I, I always just kind of stress skinning as quick as you can. Obviously with canines, um, you know, that have very little fat content, if you can skin these things right after dispatch where they're still, you know, kind of loose and, and warm, that's definitely advantageous to you. It's much easier to skin a critter like this whenever he's still warm, then if, uh, then after he cools down and goes into that rigor state. Problem with canines is a lot of times you wait long enough for him to come out of rigor and you're starting to kind of flirt with that line of it being too late. But, but a critter like, like a coon or a beaver or a skunk, um, you know, you can definitely wait a little bit and, and still, still kind of, aid yourself if you will um you know it's it just one of those things now obviously you know in my opinion the fattier the critters skin the easiest anyway right i mean i would rather skin 20 coons here than five coyotes because i can just pull them so much easier uh, a critter with large fat it's no different than this than this squirrel here right i am gonna fight skinning this squirrel more than i will fit skinning this this coon and he's you know 10 times the size, right? But because this coon has a lot of fat on them, they just peel easier. So anyway, uh, like I said, some things to consider, uh, some things that, you know, 
I've just kind of learned over the years, uh, you know, and like I said, I, I, I definitely, just because of the rhythm that I get into, generally, I do skin um, every day's catch that day. Now, that being said, if I have a slow day, maybe I only, uh, maybe I only catch a couple critters or something, I, I, I have just, you know, and I will just, just lay them down, you know, go catch the next day, and then I've kind of got enough to make it worth it if it, if if that makes sense. Um, but, you know, in all honesty, and I, you guys have heard me talk about this before, I love being in this fur shed, you know, just as much, if not more, than I love being out on a trap line. Now, obviously, they go hand in hand. you got you got to have the critters to be in the fur shed. But to me, come out here at the end of the day, if I'm not pressed for time and uh, I can just come out here, you know, turn on the radio, have a couple cold beers, and just sit here and work on the fur for a little bit, that to me is is just as much fun as being out running the lines. So anyway, those are my tips for um, time frame on skinning. Like I said, I get a lot of questions on it, so I just wanted to touch on it. Um, experiment if you can, but definitely, uh, you know, don't, don't be under the assumption that you have to get that fur done or it's going to go bad. Like I said, the biggest thing with canines is, uh, you know, more of a timely stressed manner than than your your fattier critters, but you know, like I said, if you hang this sucker up, let those let those intestines go down into the chest cavity. You can definitely save yourself a few hours. Um, like I said, you just got to kind of play with it. So with lower fur prices this year, you know, this is kind of the experimental time for a lot of people too. So play with it, uh, kind of figure out your system. Like I said, my system has always been skin that day's catch, have the previous day's catch. Uh, you know ready to go to be fleshing and then that way I, I'm just in a good cycle so that's what I've got for you guys today like I said I get a lot of questions on it so I thought I would touch on it I hope this helps a lot of you new guys out there because um, I, I do get a lot of questions on it so anyway um, like I said if you're looking for some apparel we've got it now it's available um, but yeah I, uh, I'm going to get to skinning these, these couple of critters. i got another pile of fur back behind me, but I just wanted to kind of showcase kind of two opposite ends of the spectrum for you guys. But anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you've got something to, to add to this, definitely leave a comment down below, and uh, you know, hopefully somebody will find it and, uh, <laughs> and uh, find it useful. By the way, I don't know if you can see, but this is actually, if you watch the previous video here, this is the... Uh, this is that that blue coon from the uh, the previous video, and uh, now that it's all dried out, you can really really see the difference. This is this is a prime coon versus that blue coon. So I had a lot of people asking about that, uh, you know, as far as what it would look like after it's actually actually dried out. So there you go. Been getting a lot of questions on the tails too. Um, I've always you know kind of pleated my tails. Uh, whenever I sell to the fur industry over the last couple of years, I've gone a little bit different route as far as uh, selling my fur. So it's just not really, uh, I'm not selling the fur per se to the, the industry. So um, I've got a little different market, so there's just no need for me to plead them. Um, I'm selling a, to a different market. So that's the reason I've been getting a lot of questions. Why do you not pleat the tail that you used to? That's the reason. Um, so they don't look quite as good, I don't think, as, as pleading, but it saves me a lot of time. So, anyway. All right, y'all. Uh, I'm going to leave that to you there. And as always, I appreciate the view. Hope you learned something. We'll see you on the next one. Real quick, almost forgot. Don't forget, if you would like your uh, catch photo or barn photo featured at the end of one of these videos, don't forget to tag me. Um, Coon Creek Outdoors, Facebook, Instagram. I think you can now do it on YouTube too. Um, I don't know how that works yet, but I, I got a notification for hashtag. But yeah, tag me, uh, Coon Creek Outdoors, and you may have uh, your picture on the end of the video. All right, I'm out.